Hello guys. Many of you have written to me about, well, quite a few things, but apparently I got over 32, I think, email, 32 the last time I counted, about Harry's appearance and James Corden, who's a, if I believe he's some sort of talk show host. Um, I haven't seen it, but uh, some of you have sent me snippets of that. <sighs> what I'm about to say, as usual, because I have to say this, what I'm about to say, it's, um, it's these are all my thoughts and opinions, guys. If you, if you know, I I read, I I do a little bit of, I do some research. I actually, quite actually, lately, because you guys have been putting me, <laughs> sending me so much stuff that I actually have to research a lot before I, I give you an answer. So all of these I'm prefacing so I don't keep repeating myself throughout the video. These are all my thoughts and own opinions. Uh, please, let's keep it civil in the comments as well as I don't like sophistry. So you know that I keep repeating myself on that. But sophistry, it's not welcome in this channel, which is basically answering or are making an argument with something with issues that have nothing to do with, with what we're discussing. Anyways, having said that, that these are all my thoughts and opinions, I'm going to start. A lot of people are going on about, and this is something that for some reason, I don't know if it's to enhance the press narrative or it sells more papers and stuff like that. I've said it before, and I'm going to repeat it very slowly again. Harry and Meghan have the ability to persuade themselves that what is convenient is true. And then they persuade themselves that that narrative must be the truth, whether it's factual or not. Facts are, facts are a foreign concept for Harry and Meghan Markle. Um, that is called sophistry. For example, let, let me give you a very clear example of what sophistry, one of the many examples of what sophistry is. Uh, if I go to the police station and I say, I've been robbed, you know, my, my purse was stolen. And then the person, um, the person, I, and I know who did it. And then the person, I said, listen, this person stole my purse. I mean, I was walking down the street and he grabbed my purse and he stole it. And then the person's defense is, well, how many purses do you own? And I'm like, what does that have? What does that have to do with me, with the fact that you stole this purse? Well, tell me, how many purses did, did, did you, uh, do you own? I mean, do you really need that purse? You know, maybe if you hadn't been going out wearing that purse, with that expensive purse, you know. And then they try to turn the attention away with arguments that have nothing to do with the fact that they stole the purse. But so people lose, lose sight of what the accusation was, is that you stole my purse. Doesn't matter how many goddamn purses I have. It doesn't matter whether they're expensive or not. But this is what a sophist does. They, they throw so many arguments that they hope that at the end of the day, you will forget and they'll tire you out that you won't remember what the original charge was and they'll try to make you look the bad person for owning a purse, an expensive purse. That's sophistry. That's just many of the samples. Anyways, so with Harry and Meghan, they have, this is, for them, it's about ride or die. They have to ride till they're dead the lies that they've been saying. From what you guys sent me, because you sent me little snippets, there's two things that came to me. From that Harry said that no matter what, he's royal. Basically, that is his message. I've only stepped back. No matter what they say over there, he doesn't care what over there. It means the queen has to say. The queen is irrelevant to him. That is his message, loud and clear. No matter what you do, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say. 
It's what I want to do. That is his message. In my mind, I've stepped back. No, I haven't left. Oh, no, I haven't quit. No, 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 no. In spite of the fact that he moved, comp- not only out of the country, out of the continent. I mean, he, I mean, and from what I understand, he's blaming the press. It's because the pl- press was terrible to his wife. What's going to happen when the U.S. press starts to call her out on the lies? Because what they're banking on right now is that the press is is no longer the the press have become tabloids, depending on who has the money. There's no journalistic integrity at all. There's no such thing as an ethical journal journalist right now in the United States. It's not about printing the facts. It's about printing a narrative, but. Narrative and the press, they are, those two are fickle bitches. They can turn on you at any moment. So what's going to happen when the U.S. flees and they start calling them out on their lies? Because what the press in the United Kingdom did is say, wait a minute. Meghan Markle went publicly and stated that she paid for her school. She did this in Fiji. No, her father has the receipts. He paid for the school. Meghan Markle said she got an internship, but she doesn't say how she got it or how she paid for herself while she was in Argentina. By the way, it was less than six weeks that she was in Argentina. She did not become fluent in Spanish in Argentina in six months, in six weeks. And by the way, if she was working at the American embassy in Argentina, they would all have spoken English. So there's no chance that this woman learned in Spanish. And on top of that, when she tried to pass, she couldn't pass a civil uh, exam test to become a diplomat or a government employee. She, she wasn't smart enough. So when the press started calling her out on her lies, they didn't like that. Because Meghan Markle thought that being now part of the... She had pitched a narrative to the royal family and to the idiot husband of hers called Harry... And this woman is going to ride or die with her lies unless she's called out. There needs to be a truth intervention. Samantha Markle, Mr. Thomas Markle, and the entire Markle family, and even the Raglan family, have to actually get together. I wish the BBC would give them or like a proper platform for all of them to get together. Because this woman has sold a narrative that she didn't have a proper family, that she wasn't loved, and that she basically paid her way through everything that she's a woman of color who struggled that's not the case this is a woman who had a loving family who spoiled her to death who got a very privileged upbringing because of her father who was a doting father this is a woman who's even now trying to sell out sell them that her father molested her which is absolutely despicable so in a way the markles and the raglans they have to do a truth intervention It is necessary because this woman lives in a world of lies and she has children that are growing up. I mean, for the sake of her children or the child, whatever that she has, there has to be an intervention. She has to be called out on her lies. You know, uh, whether Oprah is trying to sell a narrative, Oprah is never going to interview the Markles. She's never going to do that because it won't suit her narrative of trying to portray Meghan in a certain light. Meghan thought that being part of the royal family would give her lies credibility. And the royal family didn't lend themselves to her games because they're not going to ruin their good name. Now, I know I've said a lot of things, and I'm very critical because a lot of you have sent me, how dare you bash our queen? You know, you don't love the monarchy. You know, I love democracy. Uh, And when I see people acting in the name of democracy in a way that's completely anti-democratic, like, you know, censorship, uh, human rights abuse, yeah, stuff like that. I mean, that's not democratic. I am going to call them out. I have the deepest respect for Her Majesty the Queen. I love her. I really do. But it doesn't mean that she's above criticism because she's our head of state. And I really do believe that her downfall, if you like to call it, not downfall, but her greatest mistakes have, have, they have been the weakness towards her children. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be a little bit of a long video. 
keep in mind, a lot of people have said that Harry can't be removed from the from the line of succession, that he needs a, a act of parliament, and that her, queen, the, her majesty, the queen, can't do this and can't do that. They try to make it so difficult because that is a narrative that the royal family wants out because they don't want to act uh, decisively. With Harry, it's not about drawing a, la a line in the sand. It has to be a line and they got them concrete and a big wall because his message on that bus was, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do what I want to do. That is his message. I don't care what they say over there. I'm going to keep doing what I want to do. I haven't left. I stepped back because now they're going to try to sell the narrative that they were kicked out. In no place in the world, any place in the world, you abandon your job. You don't go to your boss and tell them, oh, listen, you're going to hire me. I'm going to do you the favor of being your employee. These are two people who are, by the way, have no qualifications. Um, you're not going to, I'm not going to do any of the things that you want me to do. I'm going to tell, I'm going to do them the way I want to. I'm going to pick, you know, pick and choose where I'm going to go. And I'm going to make money doing it on the side. I'm going to use the name and the prestige and the credibility of your organization, but I'm actually not going to do the work the way you want me to do it. What do you think anybody would tell you in the world? They will tell you to F off. They will not even let you finish the day. They will tell you just, just don't let the door hit you on the way out. So, but that's the message that comes from me loud and clear. I don't care what you say. So unless, and again, I'm going to say this very slowly. Harry did not lose any titles. The roles and patronages and responsibilities associated with those roles and patronages were removed, finally. But his titles are still very much there. Now, the queen, Her Majesty the Queen, can definitely, with a letter's patent, remove his titles. To remove him from the line of succession, one of the members of parliament have to propose this in the House of Parliament. They have to sign it, and they have to send it to the queen for royal uh, consent, assent, what they call it. Now, it's not difficult. It doesn't take long. I'll give you an example. Do you think that in December 2012, when Nick Clegg, Nick Clegg is a member of parliament, presented a bill to the House of Parliament about modifying the succession line from 2011 onwards, whereas females uh, where you don't, um, how do you say, um, discriminate against females. Before, if there, if, a, if, if a, for example, if Charlotte had been born a f a first prior to George, had they not modified the laws, she wouldn't have been eligible to be queen if there was a male heir afterwards. But now, with the modification that was introduced in 2012 and ratified by the Queen in 2013, then it, was, um, it wasn't about sex, it was the sex of the heir, it was about who was born first. That modification, do you think that Nick Clegg woke up one day and said, oh, I'm going to introduce that? Of course not. There had already been extensive communications with the Queen to introduce that in the way that she wanted. Do you know why they what that why that bill says that the succession is only changed from 2011 onwards? Because had they had they had they said it to let's the line of succession should go should be modified uh, from from the day that the Queen of England Queen Elizabeth became queen, that would have meant that Prince Andrew would have been bumped down further. And the queen was not prepared to have Prince Andrew being demoted to, you know, I think it would have been eighth, eighth, eighth or ninth, because that would mean that Princess Anne and her children would be before Prince Andrew. So all these communications, the point I'm trying to make is all these communications are done in, a ta in tandem with Buckingham Palace. And it goes really quickly. 
So Harry can actually, he, he's not born a prince. Another thing, so you know, Nick Clegg proposed a change in the, in the, uh, the, uh, the succession from 2011, right? That was, I believe, mid-December 2012. The Queen issued a letters patent in two, in, on December 31st, 2012, stating that not only the firstborn of Prince Williams is going to be HRH and a prince, but all of them. Why did she have to make that? You you know, because a lot of people assume that Prince Char Princess Ch Charlotte, of course she was born a princess. No. The letters patent before that from stated that only the Prince of Wales and his son and his first male child had the dignity of being called a prince and HRH. So the queen modified that. The queen modified. She issued a letter's patent indi indicating that all of the children from Prince William would be HRH and prince and princesses. So they're not born. This is not a birthright. A lot of people are mistaken about that. So it doesn't take long for parliament to recommend to the queen. They could even issue something because I know a lot of people, it makes them people uneasy about Andrew, rightly so, by the way. So if I were parliament, I would say, let's modify the line of succession a little bit better now. Let's do it in such a way, and they can introduce these bills. We can, they can introduce in the bill saying, listen, we're gonna modify the line of succession from the day that the queen ascended the throne, which means that Anne would move up and Andrew would go down. We would. If they if they issue laws stating that only um, members of the royal fam um, only British citizens can hold or use royal titles, I mean the Queen can do that too with a letters patent because she has absolute control over the royal titles. So I don't think they can do that. Only the Queen can issue a letters patent, you know, because she can give titles and take them away at will. Um, so. Yeah, the Queen can issue a letters patent stating that only British citizens can hold or use royal titles. That way, you know, and, and to me, that was one of the biggest things that the Queen didn't do. And that's, ah, this is the important part I wanted to get there from the beginning. The, the Queen trusted Harry's word, and that was her biggest problem. Because Prince Harry has been known by everybody to be a complete jerk. By everybody. This is not new. People are worried about oh what Meghan Markle's gonna say. Meghan Markle's gonna lie more. That's all she's gonna do. This woman, before marriage, Harry was told, listen, take your time, get to know this. You know that if you want her to be part, a working member of the royal family, let her get to know how we do things here to see if she wants to be part of the working, um, um, working member of the royal family. Like anything in life, you have, when you get, the higher you go up, you have a lot of privileges, but equally a lot of responsibilities. Um, so she was offered, she was told, listen, honey, uh, before you decide, we're going to give you the freedom. And this is very crucial that the president, nobody's talking about. She was so listen, you can remain a private citizen, just like, for example, Princess Eugenie's and Beatrice's husband, or even Princess Anne's husband. You know, if you want to remain a private citizen, because we understand you're America and you might want to go back to acting, you know, you might want to do things, and, you know, and that way you're not bound by the restrictions of having a royal title because you can be yourself, do whatever you want to do, you know, not be in the press, you know, and you can, you know, just go back to the United States if you ch choose to do that. Or, and if you want to stay around here and you want to see how things work, take your time, understand, to understand what their responsibilities are, take your time, you know, and then if after really understanding what's going on and what it entails you want to be a royal or you want to work as a member of uh, as a 
as a working, and you want to be part of um, the royal family as a working member, then we will give you a title. But first become British. See how it is. Stick around. But if you don't want to and you just want to be a private citizen, go. But there was no way in hell Meghan Markle was going to walk out of there without a title. So they lied. They lied both knowing that they were never going to stick around. They lied both knowing what their responsibilities were, knowing that they didn't like their responsibilities, and knowing that they could take off. Because in their minds, it is harder to take away the titles, which is what a lot of people are hinting, than to grab them. That is fraud. So this woman was given the opportunity, no matter what she says, she can't bitch about that. And you know what, Mr. Markle, Samantha Markle, the Raglan family deserve a platform. And they deserve, they have to do a truth intervention on this woman. Because this woman is, it's almost criminal the way she lies. And she actually has slandered. She has slandered an entire nation. Harry has slandered the UK. He doesn't want to respond. And this is another thing that's really bothering me about the money for the, um, the Royal Foundation um, that they transferred to him. He still hasn't responded how much it is that he actually gave to each. Oh, how dare you? No, it's not how dare you. Present the receipts. How much did you pay? How much were you given in comparison to? So, so the message to me, in conclusion, that he gave in that bus from the little snippets that you guys sent is that no matter what you do, I'm still royal. You can't shut me up. I don't care what you guys over there say. It's what I say that counts because all of his life, what Harry wanted, Harry got. Well, I think it's time to tell him that that's not how life works. Uh, the press, you know, maybe a little bit has been intrusive many times. But they actually got it right with Meghan Markle. They called her out a liar. They called her out on her lies. And you know and you know what's the biggest thing that the palace is failing? They should hire people who are gangster, who are, you know, from the hood. Because right now they have people who are very respectable. They're not used to dealing with gangsters, which Meghan Markle is. It's a low-ranking gangster you know, who has no scruples whatsoever. So if you hire somebody from the hood, he's going to know what, how to handle her, you know. But the best way to handle these two is to remove the titles, to remove Harry from the line of succession, to have members of parliament get their asses together, put forth a bill that states that the line of succession goes, you know, that the one that they, that they, um, reformed in 2012, they should say that the, um, yeah, that sex as a primogeniture, I think it's called, should apply from the time that the Queen, Queen Elizabeth ascended the throne. That way you would have the next in line from Prince, it would be Prince Charles, Prince William, his kids, unfortunately Prince Harry, for now, and then Princess Anne and her kids. And then Prince Andrew would be lower down the, the totem pole. But the most important thing is they have to remove Harry from the line of succession. That has to be amended because it should be stated that only you can only be in the line of succession if you are residing in the United Kingdom. If you're not, you're off. If you're not British, you can't be part of the line of succession either. Or, oh, sorry, or be part of or hold the title. But that has to, the, the, that thing can be issued by the Queen. The Queen can immediately take his prince titles, their HRH, and the dukedoms, and that can be done with the letters patent. Anyways, I'm sorry it was a longer thing, but you did guys ask me for a bunch of questions. I hope I'm answering all of these. Thank you for all your help. Thank you for all the coffee you guys buy me. It really does make a, for supporting my channel. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that we engage each other. This is not about hating Meghan Markle. I just don't like people who have committed fraud, who are lying to bring this repute to an institution I love. You know, sometimes I want to shake the queen and say, ma'am, who's advising you? Get somebody from the hood. Get somebody who's in touch, you know, and knows how to handle this because this is all messed up. Anyways, what do you guys think?